Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to look at difference quotients. Difference quotients are really just formulas for slope written in function notation. But in this problem, we're not really asked about the meaning of the difference quotient. We're just asked to simplify it. There are two versions of the difference quotient given. Um, I'm going to do one in this video and then one in part two. So in this video, I'm going to look at the one on the left, which is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And the function that we're going to um, use is f of x equals square root of x squared plus 5. So um, a lot of times it's helpful when evaluating or simplifying a difference quotient to break it down into parts. So I'm going to go ahead and first just figure out what f of x plus h is. And then I'm going to write down what f of x is. And then I'm going to subtract the values that I get there, or expressions that I get there. And then I'm going to take th that difference and I'm going to divide it by h, which would be the simplified version of the difference quotient. Okay, so first f of x plus h. So remember, when we have when we plug into a function, we're replacing the x that was in the original function with whatever's in the parentheses. This confuses people sometimes when we have an x in both. So this first x in the original function, don't think of it as an x. Think of it as a placeholder, as a box, and we're just going to replace it with what's in the parentheses. That's what goes into the box. So in this case, that would be the square root of x plus h squared plus 5. Now, a lot of times people think that they can take the square root of each part, but that's false. This is not equal to the square root of x plus h squared plus the square root of 5. In fact, we cannot simplify this. We could multiply out the x plus h and square, you know, foil it, but I'm going to wait and see if I need to do that. Sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's not. So let's just leave it in this form. f of x was our original function, which is the square root of x squared plus 5. And then what f of x plus h minus f of x is saying is just to subtract these two expressions. Since they're both under a radical that cannot be simplified further, there's really not much we can do with that. We're just going to have to leave it like that. And then we're going to take that expression and divide it by h. Now in our class, um, because of what this is leading up to, your My Math Lab homework question wants you to do something additional to this expression. So this really is the difference quotient here, but what they want you to do is to manipulate it in order to see if you can get the h to cancel out. Remember, in this expression, h is not allowed to be 0. And um, a lot of times when we're trying to evaluate things called limits, then uh, we're going to want to try to cancel h out um, and then take the limit. So uh, out of the denominator, I should say. So as a, a build up to that, what they're going to want you to do is to continue trying to simplify this by multiplying when you have a difference of radicals, square roots in particular, in your numerator like this in the difference quotient. We often multiply by the conjugate of that difference in order to simplify. So um, this is kind of the reverse of what you're used to probably when you've seen expressions where this was in the denominator. You've probably done this before, but you probably never did it when it was in the numerator. But what you do is you multiply by the square root plus the square root because um, conjugates, when I say the word conjugate, it's a binomial but with the same binomial but with the opposite sign in the middle. So we're going to still have the same two radicals but with them, with them being added. And of course, we can't just multiply by them because we want to. So we have to multiply in the top and the bottom. So we're just multiplying by 1, really. OK, now why do we do this? Well, you probably recall that if you multiply a minus b times a plus b, that you get a squared minus b squared. And in this case, our a is the square root of x plus h squared plus 5 here and our b is here. 
So in the numerator, we're going to get the first term squared minus the second term squared. So that looks like the square root of x plus h squared plus 5 squared minus the square root of x squared plus 5 squared. Now in the denominator, I'm just going to leave it as h times that whole quantity because again, my hope is that I get that h in the denominator, that factor to cancel out. We see um, what multiplying by the conjugate accomplishes. The square root and the squared cancel. So we're left with x plus h squared plus 5 minus and then this square root and square cancel, and we're going to have x squared plus 5. So no more square roots in the numerator. And now we just multiply out the numerator. So here we're going to think x plus h times x plus h, which would be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. We still have the plus 5, and then over here we need to distribute our negative, so we have minus x squared minus 5. And this is all over h times the square root of x plus h squared plus 5 plus the square root of x squared plus 5. All right, now what we hope happens is any terms in the numerator that don't have an h cancel out. x squared minus x squared cancels, 5 and negative 5 cancel. And you can see that the two terms we're left with here both have an h in them. So I'm actually going to factor that h out, leaving behind the 2x plus h. And so now we have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. So dividing those, we get 1, and we're left with 2x plus h over the square root of x plus h squared plus 5 plus the square root of x squared plus 5. Or if my math lab wants you to multiply out that x plus h squared, you could also write it as the square root of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 5 plus the square root of x squared plus 5. Again, there's nothing we can do. We can't add these together. They're not like radicals. Um, there's no simplifying that we can do here, except multiplying by the conjugate, which would bring us back to what we had in the first place. So we're going to just leave it like this, and we're done. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.